What's going on guys? It's Brandon back here again for another BFR today. Um, if you're wondering why my hair looks so bad in the back, it's because I just basically woke up and thought, why not do this video now? So, my apologies for whatever's going on back here. I don't know yet. So, uh, game 17 uh, in Boston against the Boston Bruins. That's 6 p.m. on November 19th. Patrick Kane's 34th birthday. Um, it was Hockey Fights Cancer Night, so they did a little circle with the National Anthem. Usually on the home home team broadcast, they won't show the away national anthem, but they did today, or yesterday, just for the Hockey Fights Cancer Night. Great thing. Both teams are wearing the reverse retro, so the Hawks are wearing the red and black ones in Boston, and they look worse than I actually thought they could. And uh, Boston was wearing their white bear ones at home, so and those looked pretty good, so that's nice. Um, Boston went 6-1. to one. It was a men versus boys kind of game. That's going to be the... Uh, extra an extra exclamation in the it's just gonna say men versus boys because that's what this game was. The Hawks go to six eight and three. They made a bunch of changes to the lineup. Reese Johnson, Philip Ruse, and Ian Mitchell, who is making his debut of the season, was in. Uh, Caleb Jones, Regula, and Kachuk were all out. Shots were forty three to eighteen Boston. Hits were twenty three to sixteen Chicago. Faceoffs were twenty five to twenty Chicago. On the power play, Chicago goes one for three. Boston goes two for three. Morazic saves 35 out of uh, 37 out of 43. Swayman saves 17 out of 18. Let's get right into it. So, the first we have several sl saves early, and then at 17 to 4, it's a Chicago penalty to Radish for tripping, which was an awful call as Marshawn pretty much just fell himself, and Radish really didn't have a factor in that. But he gets the penalty, and at 15:07, it's a Boston uh, wide open net power play goal. I, I didn't add the word power play to it. Let me write that down. But yeah, it's a power play goal from David Posternock, his 10th of the season from Marshawn and Bergeron, which would be point number 998 for Bergeron to make it 1-0. Um, Hall to Posternock missed. Reese uh, Johnson gets in the he a headshot, headshotted by Clifton. There's no call. Ruse was then taken down by... Uh, Ruse was then taken down. That's I didn't, I didn't see who did it, but there was no call. Uh, so then at 6.59, it's a, it's a Chicago penalty to Ruse for hooking, which was an awful call once again, as Coyle was holding his stick, and they got him for hooking, which would be killed, but it was really annoying that Coyle was kind of just like tucking his stick so that it looked like he was hooking him, when in reality, he's pulling him along with him. He even let go of the stick at one point, like looking at the official, and then the official calls it, so I'm just like, what the heck is this? Um, Jack Johnson had a good hit. Bergeron had a wide open on a double one-timer. That would be missed the net. Uh... Kane goes through everyone and would be saved. Nosek goes flying into Morazic. He's fine. Zaka hits the post. And then at 37.5 seconds, it's a Boston penalty to Clifton for cross-checking, which would be killed, even though the Hawks started with a minute and 23 of power play time in the second. That would all be killed off. Uh, Hawks pressure, Pasternak to Hall missed. Boston pressures, Tenorti good hit on Greer. Um, McAvoy had, had a st uh, was stopped shorthanded. And then Boston, at this at this point, I wrote Boston's destroying Chicago in shots. The Hawks looked much better to start the second. And then at 15.32, it's a Boston one-timer goal to Patrice Bergeron, his ninth of the season from McAvoy and Marshawn to make it 2-0. So he gets point number 999, one point away from 1,000. Uh, Greer missed an open net. It, the score is 6-1. It could have been 9-1 Boston. That's how one-sided this game was. Um, then at 9.58, it's a, it's a Boston penalty to Carlo for tripping. And at 9.23, the Hawks make him pay. as a, It's a deflection from Chicago's Jonathan Taze, his eighth of the season. On a, Domi threw a laser at the net. Taze gets a perfect deflection, goes right over Swayman. It's from Domi and Kurashev, makes it 2-1. to one. So the Hawks at this point are back in the game. Murphy made a great defensive play. Bergeron just missed an open net uh, for 1,000 points. Um... McCabe uh, had blocked a Pasternak one-timer. Marshawn wide open net, narrow miss. Uh, Felino had a breakaway that was saved. McAvoy was stopped on the rebound. And at 216, it's a Chicago penalty to Taze for hooking. And at 150, it's a Boston one-timer deflection from Jake DeBrusque. Seventh of the season from Marshawn and McAvoy to make it 3-1. And then a little over a minute later, a minute and nine seconds later, at 41.3 seconds, it's a Boston goal to David Krejci, his fifth of the season from Greer and McAvoy to make it 4-1. And the whole that whole sequence kind of started. It all started when Hall ran over Morazic. The Hawks, the Hawks, ended up getting the penalty, even though Hall was the one who ran over Morazic. Taze got that penalty for hooking. I'm not. I. It it, it you know the the, the the mentality is that refs are majorly for Boston, 
I could kind of see what was going on with this game, yet somehow they both ended off with um, uh, the same amount of power plays. Um, Zaka was denied, Felino just misses, Morazic was having a great night, uh, Marshawn took puck to the face in the third, and then he was a bit woozy. Shot shots were 30, 30 to 9 Boston to start, and at 19-13 it's a Boston penalty to Pasternak for hooking, which would be killed. Pasternak was denied out coming out of the box, Athanasia was denied. Uh, Marshawn then took a stick to the face, and at 9.33, it's a Chicago penalty to Lafferty. However, they review it, and then they find out that it was Bergeron who ended up lift, lifting Lafferty's stick into Marshawn's face, so it was no penalty. Ever, uh, Lafferty was out of There was no penalty on the play whatsoever. And it's not the first time that happened this season earlier. Caleb Jones had his stick lifted against Edmonton, and that caught someone up high. I remember that. I don't remember who the Edmonton players were, but I remember it was Caleb Jones that nearly got caught for that. Uh, the Hawks pressure late. Uh, but then at 8.48, it's a Boston 2-on-1 one-timer goal that's going the other way from David Pasternak, his 11th of the season, second of the game, from Felino and Nosek to make it 5-1. At whistle trip, Zaka, there was no call. Domi was denied, and with 2 minutes and 3 seconds to go, it's a Boston goal from Taylor Hall, 6th of the season from Grizzlick and McAvoy. Excellent night out of both of them. McAvoy uh, had 3 assists. Marshawn had 3 assists. Boston came out, and now they're 16-2 and two because... For whatever reason, they're just firing on all cylinders right now. And good for them. I don't usually say that about Boston. And then New Jersey, well, it's, it is kind of Boston's last dance, the way it's being made out to be Krejci, Bergeron, come back for one year, Pasternak, an expiring deal, blah, blah, blah. They don't have a lot of players signed yet. Um, but then New Jersey also won 12 in a row yesterday, so they're on fire as well. Uh, Vegas lost in overtime to Edmonton. They get a point still, so they're still leading the West. And... Um, any other news besides that? Not really. Hawks have another game tonight against Pittsburgh at home. It'll be Marion Host's jersey retirement ceremony, so I'm going to start filling out the sheet for that one now. But other than that, I thank you guys so much for watching, and I shall see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.